Hi guys, welcome back to Just Talking, where I talk how you need sometimes listen. So today we're doing a history video on Sir Henry Maxim and his captive flying machines, which can be found at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. This is possibly my best, most informative history video, but if you'd like to check out some of the others, such as Valhalla and the big one, then make sure to check out my history playlist, which I'll put now and at the end. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, and let's get into... The original flying machine. So it wasn't originally an amusement ride and I'll get into how it transitioned from this original invention to the ride that we see today. So Sir Hiram Maxim, born in 1840, died in 1916, wanted to make a flying machine after his father tried to design a helicopter and Sir Hiram Maxim actually drew up an idea for this helicopter in 1872 and it would have counter-rotating propellers. So he did tests originally on an aerofoil model which would have wings, although he originally intended for it to be the helicopter design, but he did decide to change it. And for those of you who don't know what aerofoil is, if you find like a windsurfer, the thing that um, the actual sails made out of is called aerofoil. And it does give you some degree of control over which um, direction you go in, and it does respond well when gas goes through it and air. So then in 1889, he began construction of a 40-foot-long aircraft with a wingspan of 110 feet. So it was a pretty big model that he made for it. And, well, it wasn't a model, it was more of a test model. But, of course, the planes you see today have a much wider wingspan, in fact. And he constructed an 1,800-foot-long track, which was made out of, like, iron and steel... And it was where the actual flying machine was weighted down by metal wheels so then it wouldn't actually take off. And it eventually got wheeled outriggers after the original track was deemed unsuitable for it. And they were along a wooden track. And if you don't know what an outrigger is, if you find like a sail, like an abseil, or some, not an abseil, um, one of like the boats with the two like things on the side of it, that's an outrigger and it would have wheels on the bottom of it so it could run along a sort of train style track. So it developed enough lift, which is the force that allows a plane to go up, to take off. But it pulled up the track as it was trying to do so and he had to abort the test for safety reasons. And he subsequently ended the project because he lost interest at its failure. And if you can see the images on the side, this is a comparison between the original flying machine and the planes we see today. So, of course, there is a lot less um, sort of built-up areas around the wings, and you don't have all the sails attached to it either, and it's in a much more enclosed space. Um, and, of course, it did follow a similar thing with a runway style. He knew that it needed to go in a straight line in order to get enough lift and momentum. So, he was very much right on that, but he did eventually give up. And, by the way, for a previous invention he actually made, he made the Maxim gun, which is the first machine gun. So, if you want to do some research into that, you can. So then he went to design the captain fly captive flying machines. So he turned his focus to fairground rides after the end of his original flying machine project. And to continue to fund his research on fly and promote the notion of flying, he built a ride for Earl's Court Exhibition, which is an event in London. And of course, this building does host a series of events nowadays, such as book um like conventions and different like theatre things and he did this in 1904. So he devised it from his original test where he had a spinning rig and he would kind of test the aerofoil model with it and the planes would hang captive on a spinning rig and it was similar to Harry Travers circle swing. He originally wanted the riders to be able to control their flight using aerofoil sort of planes but this actually proved to be dangerous and so he couldn't do it um, just for the sakes of safety of the riders and oftentimes when the planes would actually turn direction the planes would get caught in the actual metal um, sort of chains that were holding them into the rig and then of course it was unsafe for riders to exit the ride and it gave a risk of them flipping over at points. So he saw the ride after this point as a glorified carousel because it had no intensity to it and it didn't have the free liberties of normal flight where you could choose your direction freely and you could choose your height 
and everything like that so he didn't like the project after that point but he did end up building several more rides in 1904 at many seaside resorts with his amusement ride company and these can be found these could have been found of course there isn't very many of them operating anymore at Southport and Blackpool and though he only un intended on building two flying machines with the aerofoil design but it was changed due to profit reasons because the static captive flying machines they were less profitable than the ones that could actually change direction. So let's move on to the Blackpool captive flying machines, which is, I believe, the only remaining operating model of this ride. And it opened in 1904. I couldn't find an exact date for its opening, unfortunately. And it's one of Europe's oldest operating amusement rides. So it's very historical. And of course, as you can see, there is a picture there on the side of it. I'm not too sure when, but I believe it's around the time of 1904. Um, I don't think it's really after that point because you would probably see some more building around it and ex I'll explain that in a minute. So when it opened many travellers came from across the country by train and by car um, to actually experience this ride and it was one of the only attractions there. Of course a year after River Caves would open as River Caves of the World. So of course that is an old mill ride and you can still find that at the park today. So of course it did start actually building up the park so if Sahara Maxim's flying machines wasn't actually placed in the park you wouldn't have things like Icon and Big One. So of course then many people loved it because most people wouldn't even when flight was properly introduced would never experience a marvel of flight purely because not too many people could afford it and obviously a lot of people died before commercial flight was really a big thing so of course a lot of people wanted to go and experience a ride for however much it cost which wasn't all too much at the time um, just to make sure that they could experience the wonder of flight and of course all of that money went towards more research for flight for Sahara and Maxim. And though Maxim saw the endeavour as a failure, the rides were renowned for being a wonder of science and engineering. Of course, that was because he'd perfectly formulated it so that when the planes would spin around, it would actually go outwards, and then, of course, it would give the simulation of flight. And the design of the park has remained the same, with parts being changed and the planes being refurbished. Of course, it was originally like a metal wooden structure, and now it's basically fully... Um, metal at this point and they've replaced of course the chains and that but as you can see on the model and um, the planes have actually got slightly bigger and um, in like their width they can still hold the same amount of people but the original planes had a more hull boat shape on the bottom and now they're sort of more of a spaceship style um, plane instead and you can actually see on the top of them it looks like they've got arrows on the actual um sort of metal rod that connects the chains together and holds them in place um, so that's one of the design things that have, has changed and of course you can still ride this today there is no real restrictions on like the weather it can operate in and it still operates really well and it's a really fun ride to go on especially since you can see all the scenery around you and it's always nice to have all the wind coming in your face as you're whisking around the area looking out onto Ice Blast, Valhalla Grand National and also parts of the big one so it's a really great ride in a really great area and yeah that's really it for this video um, I've really enjoyed making this it was really interesting to find some of the history out about Sahara and Maxim and of course the ride is really worth a ride on and of course the queues aren't really that big for it anymore and um, so I definitely make sure to check it out it's got a great history behind it and I hope now next time you go to the park you can really appreciate all the work and effort that went into it so that's really it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Um, check out my playlist with my history videos or you can recommend that I do a history video for any ride at any park. Um, so yeah, this was just talking. Bye bye.